Hello everyone, in this video I want to talk a little bit about my latest Craigslist score, the Phoba Studio Camera Stand. This thing is huge, this thing is heavy, and it's really, really overbuilt and awesome, and I just like it for that reason. I actually waited over a year to find one of these on Craigslist, and I finally found one for a reasonable price, so let's talk a little bit more about what this thing is. So this is what's called a studio camera stand or a camera stand or a studio stand. It kind of has a lot of different names. And realistically, it's just a way to hold your camera in a studio situation. Um, I think it is the perfect way to hold a camera in like a large workshop space like mine. So a traditional tripod is, you know, something like this. And you can just see the size difference between the two. Um, it's just a standard like, um, you know, 60 inch tripod, you know, something like that. And so normally your camera would go on here, you have some kind of ball head or you some, have some kind of other head that holds the camera and then this can kind of go up and down. And if you want to move the camera around, you just have to basically pick this up and put it where you want your camera to go. With the studio stand, it's a little bit different. You have um, these knobs and the whole arm can go out and come back in, you can lock it down. And then this whole middle column can actually raise up and then go all the way down. And then also the center column can move around like that. So basically I can get the camera from all the way over there to let's say all the way over here without much issue and keeping the base completely stationary. The base is also on casters. I have the um, casters actually lifted up right now, but I can press this little foot button, lift the whole thing up, and then you can lock that in place and move this around the shop. So it's actually really nice that I can have kind of this overhead tripod shot and I can walk under this thing. It can actually go maybe about two feet higher than where it is right now. And I can have the camera mounted up there. I can shoot over top of me. It's really great and really flexible for doing all these shots, especially something like a lathe where you're in front of it and really you don't want the tripod sitting right next to you and you're working around it. This thing can just kind of go right over top of you. So it's really awesome. But let's kind of get an idea for the sheer size of this thing. When I first found out about these, I saw some pictures online and of course I looked at, you know, some measurements and things like that. But, you know, until you really see one of these in person, you can't get the sense of scale. This is over eight feet tall and I'm cutting off probably about a foot on the top and about a foot on the bottom that you can't see in the video right now. I just can't really back up enough to get this whole thing in view. And this thing pushes north of 300 pounds. So it is very big, very strong and very heavy. And if you just look at this from the base all the way up to the top, I mean, it basically dominates all of the vertical height in my shop. And I want to say that the top comes only just a few inches down from the lights on the ceiling. So I've established that it's really big and really heavy. So what's the real benefit to having something like this? Well, one of the cool things about it is the footprint is actually ever so slightly smaller than a standard tripod. So the actual floor space that this takes up is slightly less than that on the tripod. And you can actually kind of get around it because you can kind of, you know, easily move around the base, whereas a normal tripod, you can't really get around it. The other thing about a tripod is since the camera's always sitting on the top, you can't really face it down very easily. So if I want to do an over top shot looking straight down onto a workbench, something like this is great because I can extend the arm way out and even with this little handy thing I can, you know, flip the camera straight down and I can actually look straight down onto something and be several feet away. Whereas with a traditional tripod, you run into the issue of seeing the tripod legs or, you know, it's just really wobbly because you get the head kind of um, leaning over. So if you have a lot of camera gear on top of it, the tripod just kind of gets a little unstable because the feet are planted there and then your head is over there and then it wants to tilt over. So if we talk about stability, this thing is really, really stable and actually allows for some very interesting shots. So let's see just exactly how stable this thing really is. To show you how stable this was, I was going to put like a heavy weight on this or, you know, wobble it around, something like that. But I have a much better example. I've got the arm extended, you know, three feet out. I think it's roughly three feet. I've got the head up high. And this gives you an idea of how stable this is. 
So it's pretty stout. Try doing that with a standard tripod. If you're not yet convinced that the ridiculousness of this stand, let's talk a little bit about price. This is one of the most expensive things that I have in my workshop. The only thing that I have that's more expensive than this, if we look at just you know strict retail value, is the Stratasys 3D printer, which 20 years ago sold for about $25,000. So let's say you wanna buy one of these FOBA stands. This is the FOBA Asaba, A-S-A-B-A. -A. And if you go to B&H right now, you can actually special order one of these for $9,500. However, you are not going to get the little rotating mount over here. That is another $2,400. But wait, there's more. I also have one of these little extension arms, or not so little extension arms. This will run you another $1,000. So between the extension arm, the camera stand itself, and this little um, rotating head over here, you're looking at about $12,900 for this whole setup, minus shipping and taxes and anything else. I picked this whole thing up on Craigslist for a whopping $200, which is cheaper than the price of a decent tripod. So I'm pretty happy with that deal. It's a really good score. However, these things are extremely rare and it took me over a year of searching to even find one. So it's got that going for it. So let's take a closer look at the base of this thing. We've got this big, broad metal base. Um, we've got the metal column here. If we unscrew this, we can actually rotate everything around like that. And then here is for the casters. You can see that it's in the up position right now, and this isn't going anywhere. But if I just step on this and kind of turn, it locks in place. And now the whole thing can move around pretty freely. I mean, it still takes a little bit of effort, but this thing is, you know, about 300 pounds. And then if we want to lock it in place, we can just lock that. And then now it is locked and fixed and this isn't going anywhere, so that's pretty cool. If we look at this center column, everything's pretty self-explanatory. We have these um, two knobs here, which loosen and tighten the arm, and then this center knob is for raising the whole thing up and down. Now, as you'll notice, there is a counterweight in the middle of this column. You can actually turn it around and see the little string right here. So that's pretty taut. And there is a pulley at the very top and then there's a weight that travels inside this column. Sometimes when you move it around, you can kind of hear it knocking against there, but it allows you to be able to move a significant amount of weight actually pretty easily, although it will kind of get away from you a little bit because the counterweight is assuming a much have heavier camera than, well, nothing that's on it right now. So I might try and get in there and actually reduce the counterweight or match it to my camera and my setup. I could just add some weight on top of here, whatever. Um, speaking of which, this tray is actually really nice. This tray was kind of an aftermarket thing. It looks just like a lunch tray that someone cut up and I just spray painted it black. But it's really good for holding things like the remote. I have another tripod head for no good reason, just a couple other little things. But I put like my microphone stuff and things like that up here when I'm not using them. So it is nice to have this little portable storage tray. Although when this thing gets really high, it's not all that accessible. So yeah, everything moves along these little um, bearings and you can see the paint actually chipping away here from the, you know, just use over the years. And that's something I'm going to have to address. There's two bearings on every surface face here. So this whole thing inside is all ball bearings and the same goes with this. So there's a ton of bearings on this and it's gonna be a pretty big task to actually pull all these pieces off, strip that down, sand it flush, and then repaint it so it moves a little bit smoother. I've been playing around a little bit with doing kind of, you know, like pan shots and things like that to where, you know, I mount the camera on there and do just kind of a slow pan across. And unfortunately, because this paint is inconsistent, and kind of chipping in places, it does kind of have a, a wobbly, jittery effect. It's really hard to get nice, smooth motion. However, everything about this is set up to where you could get really good, smooth motion out of it. So that is the overview on my $200 Craigslist Phoba Studio camera stand. I really like using this thing. I've been using it for probably about two months now and it is just fantastic. I really don't ever wanna go back to a standard tripod ever again. You will probably see this show up in a couple of videos because it is a perfect candidate for motorization. I really wanna motorize this thing. I've got 
a lot of these really large heavy duty linear components. I've got um, a couple of these big ball screws and this would be just a great little project to throw some of those on there, throw on some big motors, put a remote control on it or something like that. Because most of the time I'm in front of the camera so there's really no one behind the camera to operate it. So the idea is, is I would like to have you know some kind of basic little remote control that I could hit a button and then just, you know, make it slowly pan. It's also really difficult to control the rate of panning by hand, especially this moves so freely, you know, you kind of get that like little jerky, you speed up and then slow down. It's really difficult to do all this by hand. So having this all be motorized, like every facet of this, just motors everywhere, it would be really cool. So I'm probably gonna do that in some upcoming video. So check out that. Also be sure to check out my Facebook page. It's where I first posted this when I um, brought it home. So you can check that out for kind of updates and little, you know, Craigslist scores that I get. You can also check out my Patreon page to not only support my channel, but also see the other channels that I personally support. So as always, thanks for watching.